All right, guys, today we're going to take a look at Lewis dot structures and how to draw them. So you can title your page Lewis dot structure notes. And the reason we do this here is because it relates to the patterns on our periodic table. So we're going to start with an example. We're going to start with oxygen and start with something familiar with uh, to us. Um, and that that's its electron configuration. So oxygen has eight electrons, and it would start with a 1s2, 2s2, and then it would have 2p4 to get to its full electron configuration. From that, we've learned how to draw the Bohr model. So in the middle of our Bohr model would be our eight protons, and then it has two energy levels, so we could draw those and then add in the electrons. In the first energy level, there would be two electrons. And then in our second energy, I'm gonna level, I'm gonna make these a different color and I want you to do that too. We have six electrons. And we're making these a different color. And I like to pair mine up, it's easier to count them. Um, so we're making these a different color because these are what are known as valence electrons. Okay, um, so valence electrons are the outermost electrons in an atom, and we care about them because they are involved in chemical bonding. Okay, so all the chemical reactions we have, all of that stuff that occurs with atoms and, and chemical reactions, it's these valence electrons that control all of that. So they're special to us, and we're going to be visiting those more and more. Um, the other electrons, our blue ones here, we call core electrons. All right, so those are just in the core of the atom. You can have multiple energy levels of core electrons. Only the last one is going to be, the last energy level is going to be our valence electrons. So what we want to be able to do is draw a Lewis dot structure. So a Lewis dot structure represents... the valence electrons of an atom. So a Bohr model represents all the electrons in an atom. Lewis dot structures represent only the valence electrons of an atom. Okay, so how do we draw it? Well, we're gonna take our symbol for our element. So in this case, oxygen. And then we're going to add those electrons around it as dots. Now we kind of pretend like there's a box around our element symbol, and then we're going to add the dots. Now we do it in an order. We're going to start at the top with our first electron. This one has six valence electrons. We're going to add one to each side. And once we have all four sides completed, then we can start pairing them up to get the rest of our electrons. So that is our Lewis dot structure for oxygen. Okay. I'll label that here so we know. All right, so let's check out another one. We're going to do silicon. So silicon's electron configuration um, it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. We keep going with this one with 3s2, 3p1. So if we just wanted to do the Lewis dot structure, we don't have to draw the entire Bohr model. We just need to identify the valence electrons. Well, those are the electrons on the highest energy level, this case being three. So these represent our valence electrons. So we have two and one, so it has three valence electrons. So if we wanna draw its Lewis dot structure, we're gonna do the symbol for silicon, which is SI. And then we're going to add our three electrons, again, separating them one on each side. If we have more than four, that's when we start pairing them up. All right, let's try another one. Arsenic. It's Lewis stock structure. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. 4p3 and I'm doing these so fast because I actually have it already written out um, so you guys aren't worried about 
speed on that. Okay. Um, so arsenic, our highest energy level, our highest number up front is four. So we've got 4s and 4p there. So remember that sometimes they're split up with that d orbital in the middle, especially when we get to these higher energy levels. So make sure you're checking for both. So arsenic symbol is as, and it would have a total of two and three, so five valence electrons. One, two, three, four. We pair them, five. Okay? Now, there is a little bit of a shortcut to this. We don't have to write out the entire electron configuration every time. But I wanted you guys to see both from the Bohr model and the electron configuration where those valence electrons come from. All right? <coughs> Excuse me. So let's take a look at our periodic table and identify a few of these. So on our periodic table, we did silicon. Um, silicon... Ooh, I have a mistake there. I'm sorry, I just realized that. Did I write the wrong one? Must have written the wrong one. I don't know how I managed that. Oh, I wrote the wrong number. Okay, sorry, that's P2. So this has four valence electrons. So we get another dot. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. So we've got silicon, oxygen, and arsenic. So silicon is here. It has those two S electrons and then the two P electrons. So it's in group four and has four valence electrons. We did oxygen, which had six valence electrons up here. Um, and look, it's in group six A. We did arsenic and arsenic had five valence electrons and arsenic is in group five A. Okay, so the A group, which is the first two columns on the left, and then our p orbital columns on the right, those A groups represent our number of valence electrons. So it's a little shortcut. So for instance, if I wanted to know the number of valence electrons in calcium, I can just look at the top. It's group 2A, so it's gonna have two valence electrons. All right, so that's our little shortcut to this. So let's write that down. So we've got that recorded. I'm gonna go back to my reference page here my notebook Notes. all right so the group number so group 1a through 8a represents the number of valence electrons All right, so let's take a look at a few different elements just to practice this. We're gonna look at strontium, indium, and bromine. So why don't you take a minute and look up their number of valence electrons and just record that underneath. Okay, I forgot to see in there. So how many valence electrons does each have? Use your periodic table, look that up, pause the video, and come back to this. All right, so you should have found that strontium was in group 2A, so it has two. Indium was in group 3A, so it has three. And bromine is in group 7A, so it has seven valence electrons. So then from there, we can draw their dot structures. Again, remembering we're gonna start at the top and separate the electrons. And if we have more than four, then we start pairing them up. Indium has three, so we get the three dots. Bromine has seven, so we do one, two, three, four, and then start pairing them, five, six, and seven, okay? Now, of course, it wouldn't be chemistry if there was no exceptions, because that's what we always have, seems, in chemistry. So our one exception to all of this is gonna be helium, all right? Our exception to the rule is gonna be helium. And the reason is, is helium is in group 8A, but only has two electrons. So to draw its dot structure, we're gonna have helium 
and then those two electrons. Now what they commonly do with this, instead of actually separating them because it fills its orbitals, it fills that S orbital, they go ahead and just pair the two for helium like that. So that's our weird exception. Big one, we wanna have some stars next to, so we remember that exception, okay? So on the next page, you're gonna be doing the dot structures for the first 20 elements on our periodic table. If we've already done it, I know we did oxygen and helium. Um, you can skip those two, so the other 18 is what we want to do. Um, do them nice and big, make your dots nice and obvious so it's not just little points on a page that we can't really see. Um, and then go from there, all right? Thanks, guys.